putting a loop by ourselves, we are going to do a data driven test. That means it will pick up a data from a sheet. For that, what first we need to do is open a notepad. Okay. We need to create data. We will create data either in .dat file or .csv file. Usually .csv files like comma separated values we will be using. I will type the data. Before that the very first row, the very first row must be having the column names. So what I will do is the very first row is quantity. Let me say quantity. And then the next thing is card number. Then the next thing is card type. Then the next data is expiry date. So I am going to give these four data. But the very first row should have a name of what we are giving. And this is a comma separated file. Now I will type quantity equal to 2. Credit card number is 1111. 1111. 1111 1111 card type is amex expiry 12 slash 12 okay now i will repeat quantity equal to 3 2222 this is visa card expiration is 12 slash i say uh, 13 slash 12 sorry let me say 11 slash 11. Then you type 4. This is again, let us say American Express. You can give anything. 12 slash 10 slash 12. Okay. I am giving three different data over here. Each data is different. In data driven test, the purpose is populate the data. So always give correct data over here. If you give wrong data in one iteration, it will fail. So always give the correct data over here. Now I am saying this is not a .txt file. This is going to be a CSV file. I would say my data dot csv comma separated value I save this close first I create a file so you prepare the data it can be tab separated also it can have right uh, somebody is asking if what to, what happens if you put extra comma or missed comma those things it is your reading job okay uh, please go through this application help me know that is again you can go through that obviously no harm so we are not here to spoon feed, but here we are here to educate and then conceptually make you clear. Syntax wise, minute settings wise, it is we expect you to read, do the homework. Now, once that is done, what you need to do is come over here. Okay. There is something called on the right hand, on the left hand side, there is something called add test data pool. On the left hand side, there is an add test data pool. First click on that. Then it is asking what is the data pool. Yes, I am putting this data pool. Data pool meaning pool of data, a group of data. Under RFT webinar project, I click next. It is asking show me what is the file name. I click browse. On the desktop, I say my data. So because I created this data here on the desktop. I open this, then I say separator is comma, again you can have any separator also not, a, not an issue. Now I say first record is variable information, variable information is, it means some column name. Click on that. Next, then I say finish, watch. It brought that information pretty much like even if you see here it almost looks like a spreadsheet. Like So it, it brought a spreadsheet. Suppose you want to add one more data straight away you cannot type. I am double clicking here you will not be able to type. What you need to do is you have to say right click add a record. You have to say right click and then add a record then it will add a row. Now we will say 5 
I'll say four 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 four. Right? Then I am typing here is visa. So you have to do this, then save it. Okay. So you cannot straight away edit. Only thing is you need to right click add a record. Whatever you are giving, quantity, card number, card type, exp date, those things will appear as the column names over here. So this is a data sheet or a data pool. Once you created the data, create the data pool. So you finish the job on the left hand side. Come to the right hand side, there is something called a test data pool. The next step is right click associate with data pool. That means this data can be used by multiple scripts over here. I can have webinar 1 script, webinar 2 script, webinar 3 script. This can be used by multiple things. Now we are going to say for this webinar 1.java script what is the data pool. You have to right click associate with data pool. I am saying test data pool 1 RFT TP. Click on that because it is a separate thing. So you can have many scripts you can have many data pools, but you need to associate which data pool has to be coming over on the right hand side. This is the next step. Once this is done, this is the interesting part. There is a, uh, you position the cursor at the top of the script. This is another important step. So I let me type the steps over here. Create data in CSV file. Um, create a data pool, associate data pool to a script. We have done up to this point. Now, let me save this as RFT webinar. I'll send you the notes at the end of the webinar. Okay. The next part is, you could see something over here, find literals and replace with data pool reference. That is a small icon, find literals, replace with data pool reference. If you click that, this is like find and replace. What he does is, if you look here, he finds hard coded values in the script. When I say he, it is RFT, it may be she also, fine. RFT finds the hard coded values and it is asking you, is this the data you want to replace? I am saying no, this is not the data I want to replace. If I want to replace, I have to click replace. If I don't want, click find. Then it comes to the next one. No, this is not the data. I am not parameterizing this. Next, are you going to parameterize the username? No. Are you going to parameterize this 14? No, no, no. No. Quantity 2, yes. This is the data I want to parameterize. If you click here, there are the column names of the data pool appear over here. Now I choose for this field, take the data from quantity, replace. And it simply says DP string. DP stands for data pool. Now oh, that is not the data I want to replace. Next, it has to come to the credit card number. Yes. It highlights credit card number. Now I say replace this with card number field. Select that, replace. Amex, yes, that is the thing, card type. Replace it with card type. Then that is not the data. 12 slash 12, yes, that is the expiry date. Perfect. Expiry date, replace that. I am done. So what I did is previously you could have seen quantity equal to 2, card number is something card type is something, expiry date is something. Now, everything is replayed with DP string because we put everything as string. You can have integer values, anything. It will say DP int, whatever. It is replacing all those information with this data. Is this step clear to you all? Right? There was another question. Will it be, will it support Excel? What you need to do is, yes, better if you save the Excel information in CSV because Excel also supports saving it in CSV. So better that you need to have uh, a CSV file. Good. Now the actual run part of it. What I'm going to do is 
i am going to run i am going to play back i am going to play back previously i used to just click finish now i am going to click next when i click next it is asking me data pool iteration count because this test is associated with the data pool what are you going to pass are you going to pass only one data or two data or all the records now i am going to say data pool iteration count iterate until done i click iterate until done that means as long as there are rows records in the data pool please repeat so i say iterate until done finish now you watch this time you watch what happens it will take the data from the data pool quantity it taking two you will see data as 1111 whatever we passed on the data pool that comes up right it is not hard coded data so it is taking 12/12 so this data comes from data pool effectively what we have done is we have done a data driven test so you need to create a data file you need to this time the quantity will change quantity is 3 now you see credit card number as 2222 right where does it come from from the data pool so simple if you know the trick in the tool every test case can be done within 15 20 minutes running i purposefully introduced delay that is why it is taking time otherwise it will finish like a flash so whatever you used to take days for testing it will take only a few hours to finish the test that's the power of automated testing tools now quantity is different credit card number is different imagine a situation you are testing a reservation application or a banking application and you need to fill tickets like a uh, first class second class business class and with different names with different destinations put all those data in a data pool record do data driven test you are good to go and uh, thousands of data can be populated pretty quickly without having any difficulty in the data entry i hope this is the last maybe i think i added one more record finished okay this is good so it has taken four records from the data pool and it has finished all those four right now i am going to show you something usually when we do the results uh, many companies use browser based results also we always use something called there is a if you go to this preferences windows preferences okay there is something called logging okay in the logging in the preferences functional test playback logging by default the logging is html so it will open up it in browser you can change it as tptp i think tptp something like uh test uh product something like i don't know the exact uh, expansion for that tptp format is definitely better in terms of presenting the results i'll run it once and then show you how the result comes this time the result will not come up in the browser it will come within this i'll show you here now i run this this time i don't want to iterate for all i'm just running for only one record i run this time it will not open browser towards the end of the test it will open the results within rft itself let us wait 
a few questions have come in terms of verification points yes that is our next goal once this finishes we are going to do a verification point I'll show you how to put a verification point once we finish this run the test has finished but this time you will not be noticing a browser getting opened you will see something called test log opening and it is another window within this if you see here there is something called overview there is something called events I will come to that even slightly later if you see here it simply says test is started at this time test finished at this time right and if you go to the events again it will show you all the messages that you want to print and from here itself you can have defects but uh, that is not our current scope so we are going to restrict only to the execution of RFT I want to print some messages to the results file for example I started the test now I finished the test now something like that if you want to log there is something called log info okay there's a command called log info okay starting my test okay then I can have I can have another message called log info uh, user logged in this is like a message that will go to the results file so you can put your debugging messages here then uh, it will all come into the results file login for order placed okay towards here So I'm putting log info. Log info is a built-in command. When you run this log info, let me remove this leap file command so that it will go a little bit faster. Log info will log the results along with the messages. So when you see the results file events, you will see that information. Let us wait. So it, it gives the data, or it places the order. Once the run is over, we will go and then examine the log file. The log file has come out. Now there is an event. If you go to the event and then expand, it says note. And then it's printing that message that I have given, starting my test. Another note, user logged in. Another note, order placed. Another note, test case ends here. The reason why you may have to print all these things is it is like a debugging message within your test whether test worked very well which step has crossed so you can have additional information like a log in your results so let me summarize what we have done in the in the last 10 minutes we replaced hard coded data to data pool values right we did uh, iterate until done then we used log info to log data in tptp format results file this we have done 